Now I done deleted everything on here, and they and they tell me this every single week. But uh, <laughs> but but here's Dr. Edward um, W. Robinson. Um, he explains basically the world's DNA strands and why the government don't want you to learn them in school. So let's continue on and see what Dr. Robinson is talking about. You can see this on hidden DNA discovery only found in black African people. Now, of course, we're using, they got to use uh, black African people, you know, as if, you know, black wasn't enough or African wasn't enough. They got to say black African people. But anyway. <laughs> it's not black, brother. Right, 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 right. So, so, so what, he, what does he speak about? He speaks about that blacks have nine DNA series, nine DNA series. So we're going to look at these nine DNA series. Um, let's see what correlates to this. So you can read part of this in um, Artley KG. Um, Krugak and um, Siestad, all right, um, and Patterson's, um, um, M, and it says patterns of linkable disequilibrium in the human genome, okay, um, and this is what it says reviews of published DNA shows that LD variants among populations with the European population typically shows low nucleotide diversity and greater LD than African populations. The strength of LD. All right, so, but they come to find out that, in fact, they tested the orangutan, and they found out that he only has three DNA series. When they tested the gorilla, they found that the gorilla had four DNA series. Okay? They tested the chimpanzee, which is an ape, and found that he had only five DNA series. They went all into the different races of the world. They went into Europe. They tested the DNA series of the English, the French, the German, the Spanish, the Russians, and they found that he had six DNA series, but they tested 116 different human groups, or those who appear to be human, we say also hybrid, mankind, human, all of them, all over the world, have six. They went over into Japan in China, and they had only six DNA series. All right? Only six. So what is it about these DNA series? Well, the greater the number of DNA series, the greater possibility of genius. I'm going to say that again. The greater the number of DNA series, the greater probability of genius. So basically everyone on planet Earth that have what we refer to as six ether hair correlates to the six DNA series. And those who have nine ether hair correlate to the nine DNA series. So Dr. York was right in exact when he started breaking down about the sixth and the ninth strands of hair, the way that it coils. That symbolizes your genetics, your DNA, just like he told us it did, because DNA spirals in an elliptical, um, um, in an elliptical um, pattern just like your hair does. So your hair symbolizes your DNA strength. All right? So we come further down. And as you see here, Africa um, 
has these dots. All right, and it's um, and he said that the African um, have nine. All right, DNA series, nine DNA series, and from below the Sahara, sub-Sahara desert, down to the foot of Africa, which is in the south, South Africa, all those ten nations of which African Americans descend from. At least one of them, I say more than one, based on um, my DNA test, because I have Koisan, I have Yoruba, Igbo, Nubian, Egyptian, all of these various DNA Melanated people. So we find that we have nine DNA series, the greatest possibility of genius. So I know I'm for one, I don't want to hear any more excuses. A Negro is talking about they're the victim of the white man. Or anything else when we have the largest amount of genius capability and possibility so my point is now no more excuses once I start hearing an excuse I'm walking away <laughs> and they're going to show I don't want to hear it Back in the days, people would put their hand up to the face, talk to the hand. I don't even want you to talk. I'm walking away. No more excuses for any of us. But this is the reason why they're trying their best to um, stop what's going on. As my wife already stated, this is what she's talking about initially. And see, Melanie has his own DNA separate from our ancestors or parents and the homo sapiens sapiens DNA. In fact, the corona um, in which that we feel from the sun is also a plasmic ray that can co that is caused um, by the sunlight or starlight. In particular, there's a star in which that we spoke about last year. Actually, it's two years now. It was 2020. They were to lock everyone up in the house because of the beetle juice or beetle geist or um, star, which is Orion's right shoulder, which symbolizes the arm of God reaching down to the planet Earth. Because if you don't know, we sit downstream from the star constellation Sirius in Orion. And the ozone layer has been depleted. At least it was. This is the reason why they had to cover it up. They cover it up now with the chemtrails and the artificial clouds. But Orion's shoulder called the Red Giant, the biggest star in this solar system, is about to implode. Or oh, that's what that's what it was. It, it was imploding as a supernova. It's going through a supernova state. So, so this is why they have the implementing of the artificial clouds at night so that we can't see it. So they never witness an event this close to our planet. The stars showcasing a corona as a coronavirus they never seen before. This is why they came up with the coronavirus the end of 2019 going to the beginning of 2020 and they use Kobe Bryant's death as a catalyst for the COVID. In fact, the word Kobe within Hebrew um, COVID is COVID. So we know that these Zionist Ashkenazi Jews are the ones who are behind um, the setup of this. All right, because of that Kobe Bryant incident. And so we know these radiation rays are hitting the planet Earth, hitting us. 
So they wanted us inside the house so that our melanin didn't come in contact with it. This is why I said on the video, well, panic, get your asses out in the sun. Open up the goddamn window if you need to and get you some of that. Because remember, in the movie Beetlejuice, they couldn't leave the house. All right? They couldn't leave the house. And plus, um, he wore a black and white suit, i.e. a prisoner. All right? Go and look, go back and watch Beetlejuice. Um, Tim Burton is talking about doing a part two to it now. After all these years, because of the event, the atmosphere of Beetlejuice or Beetlegeist, all right, called Alpha Orionis, Orion. All right, this is the house that they couldn't go out of. All right, go back and watch the movie. Michael Keaton, he played Beetlejuice. All right, you see what Beetlejuice got on, and you see what um, prisoners used to wear back in the days. This pinstripe. Uh, ain't even a pin, just the striped outfits, right? This is an example of how it looks at night with the chemtrails and the artificial clouds that Bill Gates um, wanted to put up since 2019. The same time in which that this event was getting ready to come and take place, Bill Gates, um, use his money to put up machinery in which that can produce artificial clouds. Why would he spend millions and billions of dollars to cover the sky if this shit ain't real? Nobody's going to spend no millions or billions of dollars of their own money and get others who, remember, they were just saying a few years ago that, oh, climate change and climate uh, uh, weather conditions and uh, uh, all that is a hoax. That's not real. But yet, Bill Gates puts up millions and millions of dollars to produce artificial clouds in the sky in 2019, right before this event took place. No, that's why I revealed this information to the public. All right, I was the first one to reveal this information to the public about Beetlejuice and about the go supernova. But the panic started talking about it because I was on his show for 10 hours. Um, back in um, February, March of 2000, right after Kobe Bryant um, of 2020, um, Brother Oni uh, speaks about um, this information now, you know, about the Beetlejuice. So everybody is understanding what is taking place. Okay? And I'm going to show you um, the reason why I'm talking about this because it's very important for those who really understand what's going on. And remember, um, these are light frequencies, and so they were they was afraid of light frequencies correlating with your melanin, which has its own DNA, its own array of absorption of this light. It's called photosynthesis. The same way that a plant photosynthesizes the rays of the sun. This is something that melanin photosynthesizes the rays of the sun. The only thing between chlorophyll, in which that makes plants green, is magnesium molecule. Instead, at our core, because at their core is magnesium, okay? matter of fact, the melanin molecule and the chlorophyll molecule of the plant looks identical, except Magnesium is at the core of this, and we said makes them green, and at the core of ours is iron. Iron is a magnifier. When you use iron, you, uh, when you get magnets, those are iron ores. You flip them, they attract. You flip them again, they'll repel. This is what is in your blood. Okay? This is what is in your blood. 
your DNA. So let's look here. Negro. Negro. Spanish Negro. Latin. Nigger. A person of the typical African branch race, formerly called the Ethiopians. Formerly called the Ethiopians. Because they couldn't just lump all Africans as Ethiopians. Inhibiting the Sudan of any of the black races of Africa, including besides proper Bantus, the Bantu people. Remember that, Bantu, the Pygmies, Hottentots, and Bushmen, a black man. All right, so, Negro. Now, go to the Zandervan. You go to the Zandafan Bible, um, Compact Bible Dictionary. It tells us that Ham, the youngest son of Noah, became the progenitor of the dark races to include the Egyptians, Africans, and Canaanites, and the Ethiopians, but not the Negroes. So the Negroes, who are also known as African Americans, are not of Ham, then that would mean that they're of Shem. And does science or DNA support this revelation? Yes, it does. By Y DNA evidence, as well as also L mitochondrial DNA evidence and genealogy, it is clear that the Negroes and all the so called African Americans are not from the hematic bloodline of those groups listed in the Zondafen Compact. Bible Dictionary, which clearly shows that they are not from the bloodline of Ham, once again, all right? And this is genetic proof, all right? Here it is. Let's get into it. So, um, there was a question I was asked on Google. It says, how many people in the world are estimated to have ELB1A? Answer two. How many people in the world are estimated to have E1B1A DNA, a genetic marker of the ancient Hebrew Israelites? Right? It's a genetic marker of the ancient Hebrew Israelites. E1B1A. E1B1A. And the subclans. And the subclans. But this is the um, haplo group, E1B1A. This haplogroup is found predominantly among Bantu, Negro, descendants, to include but not limited to the African Limba. Many West African tribes, Igbo, Jews, Yoruba Jews, or Hebrews, as we refer to the mass, I hate to use the word Jew, um, per se, um, even though Jew come from Judea or Jehuti, who was the God of wisdom. So we have to understand it from that point of view. African American, West Indian, Brazilian, Haitian, and other Negro influenced races throughout the Caribbean and scattered across all different nations. Contrary to false DNA reporting, this is not a sub-Saharan or hermetic haplogroup. It is Semitic in origin. Negroes have been identified as being exempt from the bloodline of Ham, per the Zendafan Compact Bible Dictionary. This haplogroup represents the Y DNA of Jacob, the father of the 12 tribes of Israel. Now, who is Jacob? Really, Jacob is Yakukur, all right, of the 15th dynastic period in ancient Kemet. He was one of the last from the 14th dynastic period, going into the 15th dynastic period, who was there before the, um, the Hyksos. He was of West Semitic branch. All right. Understand what I'm talking about here. So groups and subgroups, Negroes, of E1B1A 
which is E dash M2, um, Shemitic bloodline. So we have African Americans, mostly Igbo, all right, Bantus, um, Bimal uh, Bimaleki, um, Belanta, Bajagod, Iwe, Fanti, Fula, Ga, and you already said the Igbo, the Limba, the Mandinka, Ovimbo, Tusi, Yoruba, West Indian High, Brazilian High, Puerto Rican High, Haitian High, they have high frequencies of E1B1A scattered across other groups and throughout the world. Now, the Limbo people are the tribe of Levi. The Limbo people are the tribe of Levi. Okay? Groups and subgroups of E1B1B is E M35. That is Ham's bloodline. So the Algerians, the Amharas, which is Ethiopians, the Berbers, Moroccan, um, the Bija, um, Datok, Ethiopians, or Oroma, Oromo, Weleta, the Ethiopian Jews, now hold up, the Ethiopian Jews are also part Semitic and also part Hemetic. The Egyptians are also um, part Shemitic and part Hermetic. So there are some which are listed in this E1B1B, which can also be listed as E1B1A. Fur and Libyan, the Maasai, the Mosabites, um, the Somalians, and the Jaharas, um, the Jahara. With the Hujurhawas. All right? Now, all 12 tribes of Israel are Negroes. Now, this is even where the Hebrew Israelites are sound all over the streets. But the way in which we're going to put it together here today will show you not just the physical aspects, genetics, but how all of this ties in. Now, like I said, Ya Jacob, which is Yaku, is actually goes back to the Pharaoh or the Nagu of the fifteenth dynastic period. All right? So Jacob is they refer to Jacob as biblically actually would be related to um Yaku Kerr. Okay, and I'll get more into how all of this information ties in really back into the Egyptian bloodline because the Egyptians um, are also are, um, are the Hebrews. This is the mixture of the Shemitic and the Hamitic lines. All right? And this is what is being spoken of by the Hebrew Israelites because they're so busy trying to prove that they exist in a vacuum just like most of everybody else. All right, so um, you know that Jacob, all 12 tribes of Israel, Negroes. Um, so Jacob plus his four wives, Leah, um, Belha, um, Zilpah, and Rachel. And from them, uh, they, they produce the 12 tribes of Israel, uh, represented the subgroups of E1B1A, Negroes and their seas worldwide. And we're going to stick to this E1B1A because that bloodline is the chosen bloodline or the most important bloodline um, based from the Bible. And notice that no Hebrew or Israelite ever speaks on the fact, or Egyptian, or Kemetic, none of them speak on the fact of what's the, why is the um, Negroes of the Bible um, special? What makes them special? Okay, well, part of it is what we just talked about um, 
being melanated and being able to absorb the rays of the sun, which all melanated people have that capability, but their organs in which that, and glands in which that they have, in which that no one else has. And Dr. Deborah Blair told us about this, but he didn't correlate it to the fact of being an evil and B1A. And he speaks about the mound in which it has a hole in the center of it at the top of the roof of your mouth, in which that certain breathing techniques and um, can cause what is called the gushing down of the crystals, or chrism, as it is called, coming through that hole down into the cavity of the mouth, in which that you can, um, it has a sweet taste to it. And this is what is called the manna that falls from heaven. All right, it is the mixture of HGH, human growth hormone, and um, the penolene, uh, 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 or what is the um, byproduct of the serotonin, melatonin um, in the brain, in which that is called the land of the milk of honey. And the land of milk of honey, this milk and this honey correlates. Um, and this is what is come. This this is what comes down into. Um, the mouth region from certain exercises and meditation techniques um, through that hole. All right, it's called um, the elixir of life. All right, if you um, swallow it properly, certain techniques. To, what it does is regenerate your cellular structure. That is what is known as the seed of immor the seed of immortality. All right, this is what this is what makes the people with E1B1A special than anyone else on the planet Earth. Okay? Now, there's another gland in which that is spoken of. This one is by Dr. York, Dr. Malachi Z. York. He speaks and tells us about the berry gland. And we said, once you to dwell within this um the section of the hypercampus area in the brain, but now it resides in the submental region in our head, which is actually behind about an inch behind the um, chin area and about an inch or so up from um, the Adam's apple in the um, right above the throat under the chin area. So this is where this uh, resides at, and it feels like a ball. All right, it feels like actually like two halves of uh, two balls. All right, the largest one is normally on the right side, but it feels like two balls underneath your chin area. So, understand these are the markers that we have to begin to start looking for anyone who's talking to us. They must have these markers because these are the people in which they actually is from the line of Judea. Or in this case, the line from the from the spiritual line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. All right, and the reason why we have to do this physically is because when you take a DNA test, they speak of your genes going back to these particular biblical characters. So since that is the case, we now take on the fact of our genetics having to manifest these physical things into existence, into reality. So we always speak about as above, so below, now as within, so without. So now we have to deal with that as within aspect, and that is your DNA. The word DNA, um, you're talking about intelligence, all right? Intelligence, we went over this last week. Intelligence, intel means information. I and gen genes. So it's talking about the information that I receive from my genes. This is talking about the ancestor speaks. This is the ancestors. These are your ancestors, your DNA. And your ancestors speak by way, um, um, by way of your genes to you. Okay. No coincidence that genes 
um, is the same way that they use when you put on a pair of jeans, you wear them. Um, so you wear them externally, and it's jeans in which that you have internally that you must wear. All right, so we continue on. So get the book, A Jew, A Negro. I spoke about this book before, being a study of the Jewish ancestry from an impartial standpoint. Author Talmudge Abernathy. In the book it says, Herodotus is affirmed that the Amani, who originally a colony of the Egyptians and Ethiopians, and that they spoke a language composed of words from both those nations. It is elsewhere shown that the Jews and Egyptians had intermarried. So this is what we was talking about, that the Jews and the Egyptians had intermarried. All right? So you get Egyptians of Jewish um, ancestry on the thrones of ancient Egypt. And I've shown that with Ramesses III, who's one of my physical ancestors. And he had E1B1A genetics, though, which is Hebrew. <laughs> Here we have another instance of the Egyptians in turn being interred to the Ethiopians. So we know that the so-called Negroes are the true Jews, the true Hebrews, true Israelites. All right. Even the Bible actually speaks of this. Deuteronomy 28:15. But it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all His commandments and His statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall be come upon thee and overtake thee. All right. So what are these curses? Well, Deuteronomy 28:68 says, And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt, slavery, again with ships. Now, you don't need, if you're in Africa, you don't need ships to get to Egypt. Because Egypt is in Africa. <laughs> so this Egypt in which they're talking about is talking about the way in which that this society was patterning itself after Egypt. Because you go to Washington, D.C., we know that the Potomac is laid out after Egypt. The obelisk is there, which sits at this, uh, uh, right behind the pool, which is actually the same thing which they have in ancient Egypt. So it says, again, with ships, by the way whereof I spake with thee, thou shalt see it no more again. All right? Thou shalt see it no more again, and there ye shall be sold into your, to, unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy save you. All right, so, or no man shall save you. All right, so, um, remember, the emperor said that 85% of our ancestry was already here. However, 15% of our ancestry did come from Africa. This is the 15% that came from Africa. This Hebrew line in which that we need it for the last days here. Right? And these was the Igbo Hebrews or the Hebrew Igbo people. The Hebrew Yoruba. Alright, this is who we mixed in with. And I'll show you. Get the book, Transatlantic Slave Trade. They tell you about all that in there. I ain't going to dwell on that. All right, Deuteronomy 28, 48. Thou shalt thy serve enemies, uh, thy enemy, which the Lord shall sin against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he, had, until he have destroyed thee. Well, yeah, he has destroyed thee. Not physically, but mentally, we have been destroyed. But he go the yoke on the neck. We've seen, these, we've seen these pictures. You know, there it is. They're so slaves. Slaves. Right? We've seen these before. 
Here go the yoke on the neck, the chains. Um, if you go to a uh, um, museum, uh, um, African museum, then um, in Washington, D.C., as well as also in California, you see the actual chains in which that they brought 15% of our, of our ancestry here to America. All right? Only 15%. All right? But we still have to acknowledge that 15% in which that came in order to pass the, those genetic traits off to us um, who was already here. But we was already getting that too through the Malian um, who brought his people here, which was over 20,000 of them, which was, of course, Abu Bakari II, who gave up the throne of Mali, of the Malian Empire, in order to come here to the Americas, all right, um, his brothers and sisters who was already here. We're talking about the Omecs and, um, and different other um, tribes of people in which they had already came here, um, like we said, over the 100,000-year period, all right, because there was people that was here before the 100,000 years of doing import and export, and those are our ancestors as well, all right? Now, Deuteronomy 2850, a nation of fierce countenance, which shall not regard the person of the old, nor shew favor to the young. Well, we, we already seen plenty of that. You know, you go back to Trayvon Martin, you go back to Michael Brown, you go back to Eric Gartner, you go back to Floyd, um, you know, I mean, Trayvon. Uh, um, 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 what's his other name? Tim Moore Rice. I mean, you, you can, they, they don't have this shit. You don't matter how young or old, shit, you can get it. All right? And the scripture speaks about that. Psalms 83 4. They have said, Come and let us cut them off from, the be, from being a nation. Oh, shit. What? They have said, come, let us cut them off from being a nation. But goddamn, y'all know somebody else who had that done? <laughs> to this extent, I don't know anybody else from that extent. And it's funny, too, because this is Psalms, 80, this is Psalms 83, 4, and in Psalms 82, 6, it says that ye are gods, but ye shall die like men. <laughs> So, you know, just, just, just the next chapter over is telling you uh, that your nationality is going to be taken from you. Ain't that some shit? And there's nobody else on planet Earth whose nationality has been taken from them that I know of. We go over this every week in class. Well, we know that uh, Chinese, 100 years ago, was still China. Chinese, um, Chinese was from China. Korean was from Korea. Negroes is from where? <laughs> Black is from where? Yeah, all, you know, all, all, all people have been enslaved at one time, but not oh yeah, people. everybody been enslaved, but God damn it, they they still got a nationality. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, ain't that something? Everybody been enslaved, but yet, um, the reason why we the ones in which that is still stuck in slavery, uh, uh this mental condition is because. We haven't come out from slavery and reclaimed the nationality. No, we still want to be black. Else to give us a nationality. <laughs> How would you want to be black, man? Huh? They want to be black, man. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And this is what it says. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. So they don't want us to be Moors, which ties us back to he being Hebrew Israelites. So destroy their nationality. Destroy them from being a nation. And this is the Psalms 82 3. Right? And I don't, I don't mean to get so biblical, this class, but we're trying to show the connecting pieces on what is going on that is even in the Bible. Since Christians over to me, they go buy the Bible. They go and buy it. 
you know. Well, let's go buy it right. <laughs> right? So. <laughs> Tell them say it like that, brother. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they go buy the Bible. All right. So. <laughs> so right here. Ancient, right? <laughs> So right here, ancient Egyptian Y DNA E L B one A one, the mitochondrial DNA L O D three B one. This is from the age of nine hundred and fifty A D in ancient Egypt, and my genetic distance is only three point three two two. So this means that this is in my genetic bloodline, specifically back to nine hundred and fifty um, A D. All right. Um, this is before a thousand, um, a thousand um, years after Christ. All right. So, if you can see here, you have many. Um, I'm gonna have to blow it up for so y'all can see this. All right. So, you have non-scholars on YouTube who say, "Well, the Moors are from Ishmael." That's E1B1. Um, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, excuse me, E1A. One or A. That's E1A. No, right here it says Moors of Cordoba, the Khalifa, the Caliphate. Now, the Caliphate means the rulers. Understand that. The Caliphate means the rulers, the Moorish rulers of Cordoba, queen. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, this is the, these are the kings and queens, and in particular the kings, all right, because it's talking about the Y DNA. As you, as you see here, it's ELB1A, the same as mine's 1AL. So all the Moors are not from Ishmael. These Moors in Cordoba, who was the Khalifa, a Khalifa, were Moorish Hebrew Israelites. Moorish Hebrew Israelites. So we, so we are Moorish Americans, but we are Moorish Hebrew Israelites in America. All right, so continue on. All Get the book, The Limba, The Lost Tribe of Israel in Southern Africa by um, Magdalene LaRousse. All right, The Limba. All right, so. The Limba people are also the Igbo, or one of Nigeria's largest ethnic groups with a population estimate ranging between 20 to 50 million. So see, the Europeans thought they were just getting free labor with, those 15, with that 15% of our um, ancestors that uh, allegedly they brought over here. All right? They thought they were getting some free, but they didn't know that they was mixing this Hebrew Israelite line back into the indigenous people that was already here. And, and there's already many books that I've um, showed um, in this class in which that showed that the Indians were Hebrews. Look at the Book of Mormons, as a matter of fact, it speaks on it. That the Hebrew Israelites were uh, uh, the Native Americans, were the Indians. All right, and this is important because we, as being indigenous Aboriginal, we too have this indigenous uh, blood, but we also have this Hebrew blood. And the Empress told us this many times. This is why I'm going into this information because the Empress spoke of the fact that we was from the that we was the tribe of Shabazz. The tribe of Shabazz means the tribe. Of um, the lost uh, and found tribes of Israel. Who's the lost tribe of Israel? 
the tribe of Shabazz. All right, same thing. So, the Igbos are one of Nigeria's largest ethnic groups with population an estimated range from 20 to 50 million. I'm convinced that the Igbo ancestors were Jews. The Lemba, the Wild Reba, and the uh, Murinya are a Bantu speaking ethnic groups which is native to Zimbabwe and South Africa with smaller and less known branches in Mozambique and Malawi. According to uh, Trudor um, Puffett, then professor of modern Jewish studies at the University of London in the 1980s when he did his first field work among the Limba in South Africa, Zimbabwe and Malawi, they numbered an estimate of 80,000. The name Limba, as Parfit speculates, may originate in Tulamba, a Swahili word for the turbans, which was worn by some Bantu peoples. Right? Or it may have originated from Limbi, a Bantu term for a non-African or a respected foreigner. Since the late 20th century, there has been increased media and scholarship scholarly attention with regards to Limba claims to common descent from the Jewish people. Genetic Y DNA analyzes, um, analysis with the 2000s have established a partly um, Middle Eastern origin for a portion of the male Limba population. According to the Limba tradition, the male ancestors were Jews who left Judea about 2,500 years ago and settled in a place called Sina, which was located on the Arabian Peninsula, present-day Yemen. Much later, according to uh, Rudo uh, Mathava, their oral history reveals that they migrated into northeast Africa, Ethiopia. After these ancestors intermarried with local women and became um, established in Africa, at some point, the tribe split into two groups. One staying in Ethiopia, which of course is the Falashian Hebrews, and the other traveling further south along the east coast. The Limba claimed that this second group settled in Tanzania and Kenya. Now, they're known as the Maru people. All right? These people that settled in Tanzania and Kenya are known as the Maru people, M-E-R-U. What is the original application of the name of America? It's Maru. So I'm showing you all of these connections. Building what was referred to as another center and center two. Others supposedly settled in Malawi, where their descendants reside today. Some settled in Mozambique, eventually migrated to Zimbabwe and South Africa. Come to find out, that Nelson Mandela was E1D1A. He was Hebrew, Israelite. Even though he had Bushman, Hot and Tot, Kali son, ancestry. Genetic tests carried out by British scientists have revealed that many of the liberal tribesmen in southern Africa has Hebrew origin. According to the reports by BBC, the Limba, a tribe of 80,000 members, has lived in central Zimbabwe and northern South Africa, has customs which were similar to the Jewish ones. Limba refrains from eating pork and other foods forbidden by the Torah and forbidden combination of, of um, permitted foods with yarmulkes, little skull caps, conduct rituals, animal sacrifice, or slaughter as it is called here, have a holy day once a week. They even put a star of David on their gravestones. According to their oral tradition, the Limba are descended from seven Jewish men who left Israel 25,000 years ago and married African women. According to the BBC, this sacred prayer language is a mixture of Hebrew and Arabic, which is what ours is also. <laughs> Remember, we um, spoke about the fact how Algonquin is part Hebrew and Arabic. Which is um in the and it's talking about old um Hebrew in particular, which is Phoenicia. 
a Y DNA genetic study in 1996 of 49 limbo males suggests that more than 50% of the limbo um, the limba uh, Y chromosomes or somatic in origin. The genetic studies also shows that 50% of the males in the Buba clan had the Cohen marker. Cohen marker, which means the high priest. In other words, they were Levites. This is the Levite priesthood that we're talking about right here. A proportion which is higher than that which is found in the general Jewish population. So they have a portion. The, the Buba clan has the Kohen marker of being a Leviticus priest, which is higher than even the general population of the Jews or Jewish people. Members of the priestly clan of the Limba, the Buba, which is one of the 12 clans, have a genetic element also found among the genetic priestly line known as Kohenim. They were amazed. Of course, the European is amazed by that fact because how did the Negroes get all this priestly clan markers or genetic markers or Kohen markers in the DNA? Professor Tudor Parfit from the University of London told the BBC it looked as if the Jewish priesthood continued in the West by people called Kohen, and in the same way, it was continued by the priestly clan of the Limba. In order to more speci uh, specifically define the Limba people's origin, um, Prophet and others developed a larger study in order to compare additional Limba studies or subjects for whom clans was recorded with males from South Arabia and Africa, as well as Ashkenazim, and Sephardic Jews. Several rabbis and Jewish applications support their recognition as descendants of the lost tribes of Israel. So they have genetic markers which that prove the fact that they are from the lost tribes of Israel. In particular, they are the Levite priests. Here it is, Y-DNA. You go to MyTrueAncestry.com and they'll show you your closest genetic moderate moderate population, all right, Ethiopian, which is Anuak. Anuak is, uh, I guess we can say the Anunnakians, all right, 4.043, very close. That's in my genetic line immediately. Sudanese, so Nubian, 6.73, immediate. Sandawi, 9.116. Bianca, um... Pygmy, 1088. Masa, 1553. Masa, 1585. Ethiopian, 1629. Oh, and here it is. Ethiopian Jewish, 1803. All right. So I'm related to the Ethiopian Jewish. Now we come down, we say the genetic closest line in population is the Libyan Jewish, 8.822. Tajnesian Jewish, 10257. Algerian Jewish, 1266. Moroccan Jewish, 13. So, um, as you heard of the Good Samaritan, the, the um, story tale of the Good Samaritan, well, Samaritan is 1370. Sephardic Jewish, 1371. All right, Palestinian, 1441. Jew, Syrian. 1510. Mitochondrial DNA. Closest genetic population is who? The limba. 7.788. The Bantu, 8.990. The Bantu Southwest, 13.29. The Mandinka, 13.41. Bantu Southeast, 13.42. Sub-Sahara, 13.47. Yoruba, 13.47. The Bianca Pygmy, 15.81. So, the population which that deals with the Hebrew bloodline, the Limba, the Bantus, the Mandinka, the Yoruba, all of that is 
in the immediate genetic moderate bloodline. This is your closest genetic moderate population. So you deal with frequencies. Um, here you have A, B, C, D, E. All right. And the various E's. And we're looking at the Limba, the Riba, the Venda, the Jews. All right. 16, 11, 32, 0 for the Jews. That is the E1B1A. 16, 11, 32 for each of the um, Ebo, Yoruba. All right. The Jews, 0, EM2. And there's only, and so we have the largest, this is what they mean by the largest genetic marker. All right, of the E1B1, um, A. Now, haplogroup in the Rima and Limba. All right. You can see some of the ratios there. I went to MDLP World 22 Oracle results, and these are the results. And you see the population. Derive. This is the smallest. That means it's the closest. 13.54. The mixed mode population shared. 88.5% limba. 83% limba. 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 All the way down to what? 20. So limba is definitely... Uh, Showing quite a bit in the chart. So that means I have Leviticus, I'm a Levite priest. All right? And I don't slaughter animals. Sorry. <laughs> if I don't slaughter an animal, you know what the ancestors would do? They would kill the animal themselves on my behalf. Very strange. Because I won't sacrifice the animal. That's what they used to do. As you see here, Bantu derive, Mandinka derive, Sub Saharan ancestral, Yoruba derive. As you see here, Jew Ethiopian derive, Jew Ethiopian arrive again. Lumbi derive, Moroccan derive. Yemen derived. So, so as you see here, you can see the connections. All right. Even Australian derived. Egyptian derived. Puerto Rican derived. All right. Mexican derived. I got all of that in my genealogy. But there's one thing that it comes back to, and that's E1B1A, which is the Cohen haplotype, in which that they find out that... Um, that the Levite priests of the Lumpa people, or the Kohen um, haplogroup, is also T. So if you have haplogroup T in your chart, you're part of this Kohen marker. Okay? Now, it says generally, or generations, only about 2% of Jews have this Kohen marker. Only 2%. Only 2% of the Jews have this genetic mark. So only 2% of them um, have it. And that would mean basically that if there are, um, but if they're not descended from the E1B1A, then really they're not, um, that marker is the T marker. But they're still not, Predominantly E1B1A. Strange as it is. All right? E1B1A, Y-DNA haplogroup, is the fountain lineage of Israel. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, of course. You know, we all heard the biblical stories before. And this E1B1A 
um, went into production of the E1B1 and its seas and their subgroups of the E1B1A in the Earth today. All right. So, of course, Jacob, um, his wives, as we've seen before. And this is the question. This is the information. Um, so it says right here, apparently there was four different maternal hyplogroups that each represented the Negro woman that Jacob had his 12 sons by. Makes sense and definitely worth checking out. So LCE is not the only maternal line for Hebrew women. By the way, unlike the E1B1A on the paternal line, the mitochondrial DNA on the maternal line would be four lines. They were represented by L1C, L2A, L3B, and L3E, each belonging to one of the four women Jacob's laid seeds with. These um, groups of the maternal lines are represented in the Bantu expansion. All right, this is by Isa uh, uh, Cabri Sandra. All right, now. This is the biblical line, all right, Abraham, Sarah, Hagar, um, Abraham and Hagar produced the Ishmaelites, which would be the E1, A, um, 1, bloodline, and then Sarah and Abraham produced Isaac, um, and of course Jacob line, which is the E1, B1, or E1, B1, um, A, and then you have the Esau, which is E1B1B, the Edomites, all right? Now, I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about here in a second. I know some of this shit is tedious, but hopefully we can get through it here. So this happened group E1B1A, predominantly sub-Saharan African, at least that's what they say according to family tree DNA, is most common haplogroup among African Americans. So this is the most common haplogroup, y'all. Among our genealogy is Hebrew Israelite, Moorish Hebrew Israelite. That's what this is. Remember, I showed you that the Moors have the exact same haplogroup group coming from out of Cordoba, E1B1A. Among Jews, it can be found in very small percentages. Even in Jews from Eastern Europe, they don't have it. Or they have very little of it, where there is little, if any, African influence to be found. This indicates that while the Hapo group is certainly not a founding language for Jews, it was present in very small amounts at the time of the formation of the ancient Israelite nation. So they're not trying to give it up, but they had to give it up because E1B1A was at the founding formation of the ancient Hebrew or Israelite nation. This is what it just said. All right? Everybody understand that. So this is what I'm talking about, that we had to go into the explanation of this. Understand. Go ahead, brother. Understand and understand, brother. Okay. Yeah, you asked, is, is everybody understand? I said, yeah, understand and understand, brother. Okay, I got you. Thank you, brother. All right. All right. All right. So, so most of us have this. All right. I do. Y DNA matches E one B one A. There it is. And this is why we showed you the ancient Egyptian ancestral seed value of the kings, Ramses the third also had that. So this is why we had to go into explaining, because which they won't do. Hebrew Israelites will not explain the fact that this Hebrew bloodline was on the throne of ancient Egypt during the uh, uh, from the uh, uh, the 20th dynastic period. No, they won't do it. 19 from the 20th dynastic period, this bloodline ruled the thrones of Egypt. Well, I'm going to explain it, and I'm just going to do it partially here, but soon you get the whole thing, you get the whole gist of the matter. 
So why DNA matches? Once again, E1B1A. So these are your matching samples, which has related Y DNA haplogroups. E1B1A equals or E1B1A right there, which is actually um, E dash V38. Royal haplogroup E1B1A. So E1B1A is a royal haplogroup. So not only does it go back to ancient Egypt, it goes back to the Hebrew Israelites. All right, and the Moors. This is what we was talking about before. The Moors, the ancient Egyptians, the Hebrew Israelites, all that shit is the same thing. People want to continue debating this, but this is genetics. There's nothing to debate any longer. I'm living proof of this shit. Mm. Living proof, actually. Literally. So here is antro DNA. You go here, it says haplogroups. And it tells you what a haplogroup is, genetic population group of people who share a common ancestor of the paternal um, patrilineal and the matrilineal. A patriline, a patrioline, and a matrioline. What is a haplogroup? This paternal group which appears to males as required to receive that. So here it is, the maternal lineage, mitochondrial DNA, that's me, my mother, her grandmother, great grandmother, so forth and so on. The mitochondrial or maternal line is L1. Remember we showed you earlier that L1 is one of the four women in which that Jacob Married, and he had children by. In particular, mine would be the Levite priesthood. That is part of myself also. But you might have also more than just one part. This is what they're not telling you. They think that chart in which that they keep telling you that uh, you know Judah is the Negro, you know, you know, and you know Benjamin is the Indians, or you know all of that over and over. That's beautiful, but that chart is not DNA. This is DNA. Now we have our answers. That chart will have to be redone. Just that simple. It was a good track to get us here, but it wasn't perfect. Now we got our perfection, which is inside of us. It was that shows the total picture now. All right? Paternal lineage. Why? DNA. Your paternal, um, your paternal line or lineage is E1B1A. 1A, 1C, 1B. So E1B1A. That, that is it. So I am descended from two lines of the Hebrews. Two Hebrew lines. The L line maternally is Hebrew and the E line, all right, is Hebrew. Now isn't that something? Well, a lot of us have these same correlations. This is why I'm trying to tell you all to get your tests done so that you can find out your haplogroups. All right? Soon, we probably will have to start building, um, just like the scripture states, by our DNA. I don't think it was a mistake that they started out with the book of Genesis, your genes, for nothing. And then in the, the Bible with the book of Revelations, that which is revealed in what? In your genes. I think that was all part of a plan. All right? We now have to continue to plan and straighten this information out, as we see here. Dr. Ali. Yes. Yeah, just um, what you're talking about, I can testify to, I sent you a picture because I did um, my uh, DNA through Ancestry. And I have 17% Bantu. They can't hear you. Say it again. You have what? 17% Bantu. Bantu, yeah, see, exactly. There we go, yeah. So right here, 70 to 75% of African Americans have the same DNA as the Igbo Jews and are Hebrew Israelites by blood. Okay? 
So yeah, we see the Hebrew Israelites, you know, they are doing the corners, at least faction um a faction of, of the Hebrew Israelites is out on the corner, uh cussing out the white man and hating Africans and so forth and so on. But when you go back and analyze DNA, you got to answer the DNA. You can't keep lying to yourself with your mythology. All right, and there's an occult significance with the blood. You get Rudolf Steiner's book, all right, which is talking about uh, the occult significance of the blood. Read Rudolf Steiner's book. You think these Albion's uh, uh, out here who was part of the Satanic movement, they're drinking blood and, uh, and, and drinking um, adrenochrome for, for nothing? There's life in the blood. This is where they rejuvenate themselves. This is their high. So what happened? Um, type E1 symbolizes Abraham. Ishmael is E1A, as I stated. Isaac is E1B. Haplogroup E1B1. Isaac Isaac had twin sons. Esau would be E1B1B, as stated. And then Israel, which is ours, is E1B1A. All right. Now, the Edomites come from the same blood lineage of the E1B1B, which is Hermetic, Ham. All right. So, right here, Deuteronomy 23, 7, Thou shalt not abhor an Edomite. For he is thy brother. Thou shalt not abhor an Egyptian, because thou was a stranger in his land. You know, um, Romans nine thirteen sixteen, as it is written, Jacob, have I loved, but Esau have I hated. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. For thou hast said to Moses. I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I shall have compassion on whom I have compassion. So then it is not of him that will, nor will him that runneth, but God that showeth mercy. So this isn't about um, hating our brothers um, who are from the Hermetic um, line only, but we are Shemetic. This is shown and proven by way of genetics. So right here, it says, Asarelene, your maternal haplogroup is L1B1A3. All right? As our ancestors virtued out in Eastern Africa, they branched off into diverse groups that crossed and recrossed the globe, uh, allegedly. <clears throat> we don't say globe, we say world, over tens of thousands of years. Some of these migrations can be traced through haplogroups, families, and lineages that descend from a common ancestor. Your mitochondrial haplogroup or your maternal haplogroup can reveal the path followed by the women of your maternal line. All right. So um, goes back to Eastern Africa between 150,000 to 200,000 years ago. Okay. This L1B183 today, it says, is relatively uncommon among 23andMe customers. It's only one in 1,700. Now, the E1B1A um, is relatively common in about one in 600. All right, one in 600 people who did 23andMe. 
Okay? So it's fairly common. So that means the majority of us, 75% 75 of us, are Hebrew Israelites. Now I'm talking, and I'm, once again, I'm not talking about in the funny outfits, okay, that you don't have to wear nowadays. <sighs> All right? Cotton is fine, but even then, the cotton in which that oftentimes that we wear is genetically modified cotton, is GMO. Yeah, they have genetically modified the cotton. So now you even got to get online to buy real cotton, clothing. As you see here, some branches of L1 were swept along in the Band 2 expansion. So... E1B1A was Band 2, part of that Band 2 exp um, expansion. So was L1 was part of that Band 2 exp um, expansion. So I have L1 and also E1B1A. Um, um, both of those um, came through my mother and father in which that symbolized the Hebrew Israelites, the Hebrew Israelite line. So I would be fully Hebrew Israelite. All right, Moorish Hebrew Israelite. That's what that really is, Moorish Hebrew Israelite. All right. So I'm just going to read this part here. America. Haplogroup L lineage are found in the African diaspora of the Americas as well as in what? Indigenous Americans. Hold on, let's say that again. <laughs> Hapo L lineage are found in the African diaspora of the Americas as well as indigenous Americans. I'm going to have to say that one more time. Haplogroup lineage as well as in indigenous Americans. Haplogroup L lineage are predominantly among what? African Americans. Afro-Caribbeans, Afro-Latin Americans. In Brazil, Penta L, um, Penta et L reports that 85% of the self-identifying Afro-Brazilians have haplogroup L, mitochondrial DNA sequences. So that means that they have the matrilineal, the matrilineal aspect of the Hebrews lineage. Haplo group L lineage is also found a moderate frequency in the self-identifying white Brazilians. Yeah, because they're mixing in. Alvis Silva uh, um, reports that 20% of a sample of the white Brazilians um, belongs to Haplo group L in Argentina. A minor contribution of African lineage was observed through the country. Haplogroup L lineage was also reported in, at 8% in Colombia and at 4.5% in North Central Mexico, in North America. Haplogroup L lineage was reported as a frequency of 0.90% in white American of European ancestry. Haplogroup L are detected in various American Indian groups and ranges frequencies. It was found at eight percent in the Naho, uh, Koyo, Leo, and seven point one percent in the um, Chipaka speaking group, Nasi ethnic group. All right. All right. Haplo L frequency, as you see, North Africa, the Lebanon Jews. All right, number tested was 83, came to 3.60 percent. 
Tunisian Jews, 37 was tested, 2.20%. The Moroccan Jews was tested, 149 of them was tested, 1.34%. All right. I'm just going to read the um, Jewish or uh, Jew um, portion, excuse me. Moroccan Berber, all right. They are also, um, some of them were, you know, um, Hebrew. Um, 64 was tested, 3.20%. All right, um, you got the Portugal, 203 was tested and 10.84 percent. Yemen, 115 was tested and 45.70 percent. All right, and out of the Yemen that was tested, you had the Yemen Jews, which came to 119 was tested and it came to 16.81 percent. You had the um. Bedouins, which is Israel, 58 was tested and it came to 15.50%. The, the Palestinian Israel, 117 was tested and 13.68%. And the Jersey, Israel, 77 was tested and it came to 2.60%. Colombia was tested 113 and it came to 8%. Mexican, 223 was tested 4.50.5 percent, and Argentina, 246 came to 2.03 percent. So Hapto um, L um, group, okay, is one of the oldest major haplo groups in Europe, originated around 25,000 years ago. But we know there's no Europeans um, except for the melanated people who went there um, within the land at that time, 25,000 years ago. So, um, Hebrew Israelites, uh, my royal bloodline, haplogroup, group, E1B1A1A1C1B is the fullness of it, and comprehensive um, E haplogroup, group, the visual bloodline of Israel. Of course, we got Abraham. From Apple Group E1, um, Katara, um, who had um, Zimran, um, Jackson, Medan, Median, um, Ishbak, and Shua. We have Sarah, of course, Isaac, who married um, Rebecca, and they had. Um, children. Um, I'll get back to them in a second. Then you have Hagar, Abraham's wife, or concubine, and she had Abraham, uh, um, sons of Abraham, which actually would be Ishmael. All right. All right, Ishmael. Now, Ishmael had 12 prints, and those 12 prints um, spread it out. Symbolic also to um, twelve and twelve would be the twelve tribe of Israel. The twelve prince of Ishmael symbolized the twenty-four elders, um, which would be symbolic to the twelve pair of cranial nerves in your brain. So we know once again, as above, so below; as within, so without. They're trying their best to correlate um, what happens inside the physical body with what takes place externally. All right. Hopefully, I got a good look at that. E1B1A 
and all of its subgroups make up the house of Judah and the house of Israel. This is coming from Dr. Ephraim, um, Yohashu, um, um, Benny Ephraim. Okay. And, and um, I'm not going to go into all of this, but this actually shows you the, according to genetics and according to um, the Bible, the codes in which that is put together, unlike the chart in which that was given to us back in the 70s and 80s um, and 90s with the Hebrew Israelites. Um, this is actually the genetic code um, of each of the children of Israel. All right, as you see here, Reuben had four children and um, correlates to the blood type, uh, excuse me, the haplogroup in which that um, he had Simeon, five children, and those um, particular um, haplogroups. So if you come back with your DNA test, it actually would tell you um, which son and um, tribe in which that you belong to. So you can actually start putting that onto your um, DNA testing as well. As the fact that you can find out the various tribes that you belong to, not just um, in Africa or in the Hebrew Israelites or in Native American. It all correlates to the same information once you master it. So here, Levi. Asher, five children. Manias, Manasseh, eight children. Ephraim, four children. Go through Gershom. Then you have Judah, five children. Ishakar, four children. Zebulun, three children. Daniel, one children. And then from there, um, his children. All right, so Benjamin. Um, his children, seven. Now, J is the Y DNA of those who converted into Judaism, right? Mongol converts, or um, which are the Romans and the Greeks. Um, of course, you know, they're, they're converts, all right? Um, some of them came by way of mixing in with the Esau or the Edomites, all right, um, bloodline. They're Jewish by religion, ancestors from Khazar of the Ashkenazi. This would determine Nazi come from Ashkenazi descent. Right. Abraham Lincoln was the Ashkenazi. Get the book by author on Keschler, The Thirteenth Tribe. He's on the Kasari and the uh, Ashkenazi Jews, the Zionists, the Ashkenazi Jews are the Zionists in particular. And they don't want us really talking about this, but new DNA tech trace origin of Yiddish to Turkey. Genetic data shows speakers of Jewish language came from ancient Sigro um, crossroads and may have been the traitors, Israelites researchers say. All right. Their ethnic origin is, is European, not Semit, um, Semites from Middle East. The Ashkenazim are descending in converts from Khazar, Khanat, which today is Turkey, Russia, 
the Caucasus Mountains, Caucasus, and the Ukraine. So the Ashkenazim comes from the Caucasus Mountains. So how can converts in which that be brought in um, by way? Remember, Moses allegedly um, civilized the Caucasians, the Caucasoids. All right, allegedly. Now, who was Moses? Moses would actually be um, somebody who so thought Moses the third, as well as having aspects of the story told um, by Akhenaten. Akhenaten. The Ashkenazi Y DNA haplogroup frequency, the largest frequency, all right, is, all right, is E1B1B. Okay. All right, next is J2. Okay. And out of the 22% of the Ashkenazis who have E1B1B markers, only 2% of them, the Jewish, who is Edomite people, have the E1B1B Kohen marker. Out of the 22%, they have the E1B1B. All right? It says outside um, Europe, E1B1B is found at a higher frequency in Morocco, over 80%. Somalia, 80%. Ethiopia, 40 to 80%. Tunisia, 70%. Algiers, Algeria, 60%. Egypt, 40%. Jordan, 25%. Palestine, 20%. And Lebanon, 17.5%. On the Ethiopian, on the, oh, excuse me, on the European continent, which ain't no continent, so that's the first problem, Asia Minor. It has the highest concentration in the Kosovo, um, Kosovo, um, over 45%. Albania, 20%. South India, 18.5%. Serbia, 18%. And Romania, 15%. Ashkenazi Jews has approximately 20%, as we said, of E1B1B which falls mostly under Pacific class of E-M123. All right? So those who have E1B1 are related to Esau, not Jacob. All right, and we'll show you what we're talking about here. E1B1B allegedly arrived uh, um, in Ethiopia. So here it is, famous E1B1A individuals, Ramesses III, Nelson Mandela. Who else? Desmond Tutu, who just died um, last year, a, a few months ago, as a matter of fact. Lay Saram upon him. Now, Adolf Hitler, as you see, E1B1B1, Linda B. Johnson, E1B1B1, one, one, same. All of them have E1B1B1 one, 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 or A2 or A2 or B2 or C1 or C1, but it's all E1B1B. One, one, that goes for Napoleon too. So let's keep this simple. <coughs> Shen's bloodline is Y DNA haplogroup E1B1A. One, one, Ham's bloodline is Y DNA haplogroup E1B1B. So we have European looking people who have hermetic E1B1B haplogroup. But they're not E1B1A, which is the Israelites, Hebrew Israelites, Judea. They are Esau, Edomites. The DNA evidence submitted on the group, all right, Ethiopian, um, Libyan, 
Egyptian and African who has who was Ham became the progenitor of all possessors of the E one B one B Y DNA haplogroup. When they say not the Negro, Negroes possess the E one B one A Y DNA haplogroup. Proven genetically and conclusively, Negroes are not from bloodline of Ham. All right. Your favorite president, Barack Obama, is Y DNA haplogroup is E one B one A. Um, excuse me, E one B one B one. All right, meaning that he is of the Hamatic African bloodline. His father is from the Lao tribe out of Kenya, related to the Dinka. All right, and he has no genetic ties whatsoever to um, so-called African Americans. Yet he is called that. All right. And we don't even like using that term either. But here's an example of what takes place in the womb, the separation. Remember, um, Esau had woolly, um, had um, woolly reddish hair, all right. And as you see, that would be symbolic to Esau, and symbolic to, um, um, Jacob. Both of them is in the same womb, but came out differently, as you see. One is albino, which would be somebody too, mulatto. And this will explain on how we get the Albions um, looking to this day. All right, so George um, Friedman in his book, The End of the Jewish People, Pointly stated that the Egypt, that the Ethiopia, excuse me, I'm tripping. Um, the Europeans claiming to be Jews or nothing more than Hebrew speaking Gentiles. The late president of Egypt, Gamal Abdel Nasser, stated on television, "You, the Jewish, will never be able to live here in peace because you left here black but came back white." We cannot accept you. Okay? So, this explains on how that happened. So, we have those converts who are Ashkenazi, who are Khazars coming from the line of Japheth, who mixed in with the East. Um, Esau or Edomites in which that produce um, the line we have now which is in Judea or Jerusalem in which that uh, or the Albion um, I guess you can say for all lack of better terminology all right, the lighter skin or uh, pale skin people all right this is them here um, with the um, Shirley Temple locks. Right? We have the Horus locks, a warlock. That's where the term comes from. But a rabbi is exposed black Jews or the royal ordained people. Well, we know that because they carry even B1A, the Lumba people. And they have more than um, more of this than all of the um, Jews together. Matter of fact, I'll read that portion. All right, let me read that. Man, in order to, um, in order to more specifically define the Limba people's origin. Perfect and others develop a larger study in order to compare additional limba subjects from whom clans was recorded with mem with males from S South Arabia and Africa, as well as Ashkenazi and Sephardic Jews. Several rabbis and Jewish associations supported their recognition as descendants of the lost tribe of Israel. Now, why would they support it? Because of this right here. 
a Y DNA genetic study in 1996 of 49 lumber males suggested that more than 50% of the lumber Y chromosome are Semitic in origin. The genetic studies also found that 50% of the males in the Boomba clan um, had the Cohen marker, a portion which is um, higher than that which is found in the general Jewish population. So there's no Jews in the Jewish population that has a higher um, Cohen um, marker than the Boomba um, clan of the Limba males. Members, it says, um, members of the priestly clan of the Limba, the Boomba, which is one of 12 clans, have a genetic element also found among the Jewish priestly line known as Kohimin. This is amazing. So we're talking about More than the Sephardic, more than the Ashkenazim, the Limba people have more of the genetic markers for as the Kohen, which is the um, priest line. Right? This is the priest line, the Levites. All right? All right, I'm going to um, end there, right here, The Invention of the Jewish People, book written by um, Shalomo um, San. All right, get that book. All right. Um, it's just about the fact of the Ashkenazi, uh, you know, um, bloodline and so forth and so on. You know? All right, are there any questions concerning anything that I've gone over? Um, is there any one of the ancestry sites that we need to do in particular or just, just do as much as we can um, in order to get your um, haplo group you can do andro a n um, d uh, r o andro um, dna and if you already had your dna from another website you can actually upload your dna from that website and they'll analyze it and give you your um, information. I believe it's free, okay, and they'll give you your med your mitochondrial DNA and your Y DNA if you don't know it already. Because sometimes um, Ancestry and Twenty Three Me and those sites don't give it to you, but I think Twenty Three Me do give it to you nowadays. Okay, I'm cool. Yeah, Alima. What do, uh, what did what did you use? Who did, who did you uh, use for your uh, DNA? I used Ancestry dot com, but then I continued on. Um, I did Twenty Three and Me. I did My Heritage. You know, um, and some of these sites you can actually upload your. Um, once you do one or two, you can upload your information to different sites in order to get additional information. That's what I did okay. for me. Mm-hmm. Ancestral.com, okay. Right, Ancestry.com, um, MyHeritage.com, um, 23andMe, those are the most popular ones. Um, okay. Uh, African Ancestry, which I haven't gone through them. Um, I might be able to get even more additional information from them. So um, okay. that's the plan, but they, they cost so damn much. You know, I have to... Um, Budget on 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 this shit because this shit is like almost a thousand dollars when everybody else is damn sixty nine damn dollars. Like what Ooh. the hell are you doing? What the hell are you doing so that you know? Wow. Yeah. So ancestral dot com, ancestral. Uh, yeah, uh, ancestry dot com. Are they, are they expensive? No, sixty nine dollars. 
Yeah, yeah 60, 50, okay. $59 to $99, depending on where you can get the sale. Okay. Right. I check with what I check. I check with them. Okay. Okay, but I, but I figured probably the Mormons probably be higher than that, wouldn't they? No, the Mormons, no, 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 no. They're pretty cheap. They they want you to know. Oh, okay. They want me to know. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay, I got you. So, uh, as soon as I see, as soon as I see them, <laughs> they be walking the street sometime. When I get old to him, you know, okay. I, 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 I get my I get my ancestry done, you know, uh, ancestry done on my history. So I tell him about my great my second great grandmother uh, and everything. So that'd be a start. Yeah, that'd be a start. You no, know, you no, know, the picture I sent you you all that time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. That'd be a good start, then. Yeah, no doubt. Okay, that's that's about it, Eileen. Okay. All right, Joe. So soon we'll begin to start having our chief meetings once again, and that will be at two um, p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Sundays. Um, so um, for those that are chiefs or potential chiefs, um, want to be chiefs. Uh, we will begin to start having meetings once again. Um, I think we're going to try to start next Sunday. All right. Um, so we can begin to start doing those classes then, and that way we can get to even more in depth information as far as being chiefs. All right. Would that be uh, 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 one o- or two o'clock? Would it be one o'clock our time? Uh, mid, uh or uh, Central uh, Standard Time, or will your time be Eastern Standard Time, right? Pauline? Yeah, got it. No, I said, I said your time, uh, you, you, you start at 2 o'clock, right? So that time will be... Yeah, my time. Uh, yeah, that, that be, yeah, that's 1 o'clock your time, God. 1 o'clock mine. Okay, I got you. Yep, okay. that's 1 o'clock your time. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay, there's no questions. I'm going to say, um, hey, I'll tell you, watch to each day, everyone. And we can I'll tell you, watch to each. Yeah, 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 I'll tell you, Yeah, I'm I'm off now, guy. I want to uh, have some juice off to somebody down the road and uh, take my head to the gym and do a little 45 minute session or something. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm sure here.